mud. Gravel. Tarmac. Danger. Sideways. Flat out. Jumps. Spectacular. Welcome to the 2014 World Rally Championship. Monte Carlo, the adventure begins, and what better place to start a new season in the company of the greatest drivers on the planet. The WRC class of 2014 coming together alongside Prince Albert of Monaco for the opening ceremony in the Principality. This classic event, traditionally one of the toughest on the world rally calendar, oozing rich history and tradition. A true test of the very best for more than a century now. A real sense of anticipation and excitement ahead of a new season after one of the biggest shake-ups in the sport in years. It's all change in the service park. Plenty of movement on the driver front, fresh faces joining familiar friends. Polish star Robert Kubica completing his transition from circuit racing to rally tracks. The former Grand Prix star, now a fully-fledged member of the WRC elite. He'll be sharing his thoughts about the challenge ahead. For driving fast, I think it's more difficult WRC because things are happening quicker. Making a big statement on their return to the championship, Hyundai, an imposing presence in the service park, will be taking you behind the scenes with a guided tour of their mega motorhome. And what a place to begin, Rally Monte Carlo, always unpredictable, especially when it comes to the weather. You can never be sure what lies around the next slippery, wet, windy corner. The conditions can change vastly within two hours, so it's tricky. Obviously, to make the tyre call, to get all the information right, is, is it's probably what makes Monte Carlo so special. Monte Carlo, the first of 13 events over the next 10 months. The snow-bound forests of Sweden, followed by the hot, dusty gravel tracks of Mexico. Poland making a welcome return to the championship in June. The season finale once again in Wales. OK, those are the dates. Let's now take a look at the runners and riders. A new season and for the second year running we welcome a new team with the return of Hyundai led by young Belgian Thierry Neuville here alongside Danny Sordo who will compete in the tarmac events. Champions Volkswagen, the only team with an unchanged lineup, world number one Sebastian Ogier partnered once again by Yari Matti Latbala. Norway's Andreas Mikkelsen will again be part of the VW setup. An all new lineup at Citroen. Britain Chris Meek gets a full time drive after a couple of outings last year. He's joined by Norwegian Mads Osberg, who's made the switch from M Sport. Moving in the opposite direction, Miko Hervenen's back at M Sport after two seasons with Citroen. Alongside him, young Welshman Elvin Evans, his reward after impressing on his WRC debut last year. Also joining the full-time ranks, former F1 star Robert Kubica, fresh from winning the WRC2 Championship. Definitely one to watch again in what promises to be an intriguing season. And last, but by no means least, privateer Martin Prokop. The popular Czech driver will tackle 12 of the 13 rounds, and he's also in a Ford. Big crowds welcoming the WRC Circus 2 Gap which just happens to be the birthplace of world champion Sebastian Ogier. Not surprisingly then, he's a man in demand here. Before the serious business, a spot of competitive fun in carts. The drivers taking to the wheel at a local ice rink. Possibly a precursor of what's to follow, especially when they head for the notorious mountain passes above Monte Carlo. Quickest here on the ice for the record, Chris Meek. A 
Okay, on to the main event. Rally Monte Carlo once again split across two locations, starting this year in Gap, from where the crews will tackle the opening stages before the service park decamps on Friday lunchtime, ahead of the 250-kilometre drive to Monte Carlo, where they'll tackle some of the most fearsome, treacherous stages in the sport, including two passes through the infamous Col de Torini, where there's always the threat of heavy snow. Day one, Thursday, six stages, two loops of three, either side of a lunchtime service, 126 competitive kilometres, another 400 on the road sections between stages, a busy schedule. Here we go then, an early breakfast, the weather about to play a part in proceedings as the 2014 season gets underway in the darkness of the Oats Alp, watched by your commentator, John Desborough. Kevin, 1911 was the first time they came here to rally. And pretty much ever since then, that weather has been catching the drivers out. And this morning, it's the defending champion, Sebastian Ogier, who loses time, clipping a wall, on his way through the very first stage. In the darkness, Thierry Nerville staring into the unknown. Despite all of his achievements last year, he's tried three times to finish this classic, and this is number four. And it's going to last just a handful of kilometers. And as we have a look at that again, remember on the Monte Carlo, there's no second chance with Rally 2. That's it for Nerville's high and eye debut. Mads Osberg claims not to fear the Alpine elements when he faces them, provided that is the covered in snow, snow and more snow. He has trouble with just a, a little bit of slush. Come in, come in. He's lucky to survive, but fortunate to find himself starting the car and facing in the right direction. But it's filthy weather, it's poor visibility so early in the morning and maybe a case of hot head and cold tyres. A deep breath now for Eldon Evans, one of two British drivers with a full season ahead of them, and that hasn't happened for over a decade. Shining, fight right, fight right. What a baptism of fire this is for the son of a former British champion, Gwyndaf, and he too has trouble keeping it pointing in the right direction. Robert Kubica refuses to give up. This is a hell of a first day at school for the man who almost lost his life at the wheel of a rally car. Let's see how he gets on on this opening stage. We'll run his clock next to the world champion Sebastian Ogier. Ogier's time is set, that's the one in the green. The end of the stage is coming up for Kubica. The clock comes to a halt and he's quicker by getting on for almost a second a kilometre. Very, very difficult. Uh, then we, we did mistake, we, didn't, uh, we did some modification on the car and uh, we didn't lock the extra lights, so the lights were bouncing in the high speed. I couldn't see anything in high speed. Way up. It's long rally and this was the most difficult stage of my life, definitely. This is Chris Meek, who won this event for Citroen back in the noughties as a junior, but that wasn't in this beast of a car. And this opportunity, admits, will mean nothing if he doesn't make something of it. And he curbs his enthusiasm for this massive career break and tiptoes his way to take the fifth fastest stage time. That is a baptism of fire, to say the least. Incredible. Um, no one expected that. I believe everyone was on the slick tyre, but um, first corner even caught me out. There was some snow and you couldn't see it in the darkness. And then after we went over the call, you're crawling. I remember watching my recce video last night. I think it was faster than this, so that it was crazy, crazy start. But we're here, so it's good. Chris Meek survives on the stage that takes out Thierry Nerville and his brand new high and eye. 
quite not a good tires, but then uh, I add up my rhythm uh, quite quickly. But obviously, uh, yeah, in a fast right hander, right hander, I lose the I lose the front, and uh, I try to avoid a, a pole. But then, uh, yeah, the, the rear slides, and uh, we just uh, touch it with the rear, uh, and we bend the exhaust, and and the rear of the car, and uh, yeah, we have to retire right there. So it's. Uh, it's obviously not what we wanted, not what uh, the job we had to do. Disappointment for Neville, delight for Kubica. The pole winning the opening stage of Rally Monte Carlo ahead of Frenchman Brian Bouffier. We didn't see that coming. World champion Sebastian Auger back in third after clipping that wall. Over the page, Chris Meek is best of the rest in sixth. But worth reflecting now on that extraordinary start to Robert Kubica's full WRC career. On the back of his impressive victory in the WRC2 support series last season, the pole is continuing his seamless transition from F1 to World Rally. I was not expecting to win WRC2, so the normal step forward would be to step up into WRC. There is definitely a big uh, difference. Although, when you have been driving 780 horsepower F1 car which weighs 600 kilos, <laughs> when you get into the rally car which weighs uh, 1400 uh, with, uh, and you have extra 50-60 horsepower, you say, okay, you feel it, but it's not wow and it's not something, oh, now, uh, you know, I'm scared. It's, it's just, I think, it's, in some, some way for sure, for driving is easier, uh, just poorly driving. For, Driving fast, I think it's more difficult WRC because things are happening quicker. And things don't happen much quicker than on an event like Monte Carlo, where experience is usually key, making Kubica's stunning start all the more remarkable. You can imagine exactly in which position I am. You know, if, if you have experienced drivers and they don't know exactly uh, how the condition will be. You can get into the shadow place where there is river coming across the road and it will be icy. And uh, so you have to really, I think, uh, take a lot of margin and, uh, if you want to finish this rally. And this is my priority. And uh, it will not be easy already finishing it. So uh, this is re we really have to take care of what we are doing and uh, take it really steady. Not much sign of him taking it steady so far. Can the pole, though, continue his brilliant start? We'll find out more from Rally Monte Carlo in just a moment. The Oats Alp France, the city of Gap playing host to the opening round of the WRC season. Rally Monte Carlo, new drivers and a new team this year. Hyundai returning to the championship with an imposing presence in the service park. Let's find out more. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Atkinson, part of the Hyundai Show Award Rally Team lineup, and welcome to our home in Gap, this uh, amazing surface park that, that the guys have built over three days. Um, I think the most impressive facility that's ever been built for servicing in rallying, it's, uh, it's quite amazing and you actually drive the cars into the, the service centre, which, which is unusual in rallying. Usually you'll have a tent or a, a shade sale, but uh, here we've actually got a building set up exactly for this. But first, let's have a look upstairs at the hospitality and, and where all the guests will be. This is going to be amazing in, in somewhere like Sweden, even in Monte Carlo now. The fact that it's freezing outside, but it's fully heated inside. Um, a fantastic facility. Obviously, lunch gets served up here as well, and, and the drivers can hang out, and the guests can hang out. And you look at the space we've got, it's fantastic. And as you can see, fantastic viewing platform. There's, there's actually room for some fans. There's a waving, taking photos. And, uh, and they're actually welcome into the, uh, the area. It's really an enjoyable place for the, the guys to work. You can see a lot of space. Um, they're out of the weather. If it's raining, they wouldn't even know uh, where normally the, the mechanics are getting battered around. Some pictures up on the wall of the, the team testing. We've been testing for, for six months straight, pretty much. Um, as you can see on gravel, tarmac and ice. So it's, uh, it's been a, a tough six months, but here we are in Monte Carlo and a lot of hard work has gone in from all the team. If we head down the back here, we can actually head out and see where the engineers hang out and where the catering happens and, and everything else. As we move through here, we've actually got a, a double storey transportable and this is where the engineers are housed. Um, you can see them working in there. Um, there's also a driver's room upstairs. Uh, on our way, we've come past a tyre tent. So uh, a big range of tyres for the rally. We've actually got the, the snow tyre here, the winter tyre, so you can see the blocks are cut quite a lot. Um, that's going to be for the, the stage with snow on them and then in the distance there we've got the, 
the cut slicks, which are your standard tarmac tyre. It's going to be a tough rally as always Monte Carlo for tyre tire choices. And as you see, basically an indoor service park for the trucks as well, so the, the mechanics and the crew are, are pretty, pretty spoiled by the whole setup and it's, it's quite amazing. So here we've got our amazing service space. A lot of preparation has gone into this and, and obviously we're all excited to see how the I-20 goes in Rally Monte Carlo and can't wait to, to see how the season unfolds. Our thanks to Chris. Well, he mentioned tyre choice there. Crucial at Rally Monte Carlo, of course. Four variations on offer here. Soft and super soft slicks for tarmac. Chunky winter tyres offering extra grip and purchase in the snow. And studded rubber if it gets particularly icy. The choice is theirs. Some will get it right. Others, as we're about to see, very wrong. Even with the benefit of high-tech weather forecasts and spotters up ahead in the stages. OK, back to the action now. A reminder, Robert Kubica is the surprise early leader ahead of Frenchman Brian Bouffier after the opening stage. World champion Sebastian Auger third as we rejoin John in stage two. But Kevin, the simple fact of life around here in Monte Carlo are whatever you pick, it'll be wrong for at least some of the time. And this is Danny Sordo and he's had to compromise that pick. He's mixed slick with chunky rubber and he's having to play it safe because, remember, he is now the only Hyundai left in this event. Now this year there are four types of tyres for the drivers to choose from. Robert Kubica has chosen slicks. They worked on stage one, described by Robert as the hardest of his life. You can only imagine how much fun it is driving in these conditions, in this light. Robert wins stage two to go with stage one and he keeps the lead as well thanks to a couple of hefty cuts. This is Brian Bouffier who has wasted no time in forcing his way into the reckoning here. The Frenchman was hired as Hyundai's test driver last year. You might be able to see the irony. And the Frenchman has form as well. In 2011, he won this event. And he's crossed his tyres now. He's got a mixture of snow and slick rubber. And it works again. He takes the lead off Kubica. I think we did a quite good uh, tyre choice. I tried to exploit them uh, as much as possible, but for sure it was not easy, <laughs> but better than the guys in, uh, in Sneak. Okay, I think up to now we are doing quite a good job. We stay on the road, which is really uh, not, uh, not easy. So up to now, quite, uh, quite good. I'm quite happy. Robert, meanwhile, is going slowly backwards and is also passed by this guy, Chris Meek, who last year thought the pole was going to beat him in the race to this car. Chris got the deal, got the car, and now takes second place off Robert as well. Why? Because he's got those snow tyres on her. And you can see here why he needs them. Back to the rookie, the Welshman, Evans. And he simply has to be a quick learner. He almost wins this stage, stage three. Remind me again, when did his career start? His tyre choice is perfect. And had he been half a second quicker down here, he would have bagged a maiden stage win. So, all change at the top. Brian Bouffier storming into the lead, courtesy of those winter tyres. Chris Meek and Hyundai's Danny Sordo also benefiting up to second and third. Kubica drops from first to fourth, having lost almost a minute and a half. Elvin Evans, an impressive fifth. Back at service, time to reflect on a tough start to the new WRC season. It's a very difficult morning. No, nobody expected it to be as the winter conditions. Um, the temperature dropped immediately as we left the service park and it began to snow. And Luckily we had two winters in the boot, but uh, 
incredibly difficult morning. Um, we were lucky with the tyres and uh, we find ourselves in second position. So it's it's good for the moment, but a long, long way to go. There certainly is service over and still braving the elements. It's out for the afternoon loop of stages and now checking out that promising early form of Spaniard Danny Sordo in the new Hyundai. And Kevin, I think it's worth taking everybody back to what High and I told us at the beginning of this event because they said, we don't need to win here, we just want to reach the end, we want to learn the events, and we want to test this new i20 car. So, with Nerviel out, they'll be watching all of this from the edge of their seats. <laughs> Thanks, John. A fascinating first day's action here. Certainly not the leaderboard we were expecting. Bouffier ahead of Meek, Sordo, Kubica and Evans. OK, next, it's the road liaison section between stages four and five. Remember, there are some 400 kilometres on the roads between the stages today, all driven in accordance with the local road traffic laws and regulations, of course, and a chance to see the WRC cars up close and at a more sedentary pace. But at this point, one man has come to an impromptu stop en route to stage five. Danny Sordo has problems with that new Hyundai and he appears to be struggling to get the I-20 going again. Danny, what's wrong? There was the battery was, I want to start the car and the, not battery in the car, so no, we can do nothing. Not push it? Yeah, but it's, it's not battery, it's impossible. I tried to push and everything, but we need for the pump and everything, did you know? Well, that's bad news for the Spaniard and indeed for Hyundai. Both cars out on the opening day of their return to the WRC. We'll leave the luckless Spaniard there and move on now to see how the rest are faring on this opening day of Rally Monte Carlo. Well, it's a shame to see them go so quickly, but some might say they've been swimming against the tide today, have High and I. The driver that's been making the splash, though, well, that's the one right in front of us now, Robert Kubica. Robert Kubica has impressed everybody on this, his first day, and he's even had to deal with something rattling around in the footwell of his car. If, if we listen in, we might be able to hear it. If you don't look at this unbelievable speed that he's driving at, that is. Chris Meek is on a tyre selection at the moment that he has never even tested before, let alone competed on. But so far, so good. Meek and his co-driver Paul Nagel are too far behind the rally leader to kind of be tempted into any rash move as they come to the end of day one. This is a dream drive for Chris Meek. He's in second place on the famous Monte Carlo Rally. A dream drive for Chris Meek so far then, but one many thought might never happen. Meek called up full-time by Citroen this year after a lively couple of outings last season, showing blistering pace in Finland midway through the year before going off in a spectacular crash in Onipoya. He was then given what some thought might be a final last chance in Australia. The game going well, once more pushing a touch too hard. And with suggestions that he'd lost that one last chance for an elusive full-time drive, many thought Meek's WRC career may be over. I was throwing a lifeline in a, you know, in a WRC team. What do you do? Do you, do you take it and gradually build it up and get a steady 8th or ninth place finish. That was never going to get me a seat. I had to go out and roll the dice and go with it. I had to surprise people and um, with my speed during the event I'd done that. You know, yes, we overcooked it towards the end, but 
At the moment we overcooked it, we were inside the stage record in Onampoya, which for my first ever time in there in a World Rally Car is, uh, I think, raised a few eyebrows. So for sure, if I can build on the experience and bring the consistency to my game, I don't see any reason why we can't fight at the front of, of the World Championship. So Chris Meek has a chance at last to show the world just how good he is. Undeniably quick. Now he has to bring the car home, unlike those two drives last year. Monte Carlo would be a good place to start. You're going into the unknown with the weather, the, how cold it's going to be, where the ice is going to form. And yeah, as we all know, driving cars on black ice on, on, on tarmac is, is never the most enjoyable experience. But for me, I, to be honest, I've always enjoyed this rally. I enjoy the real challenge of it. and. Uh, you have to drive with your your feeling, use your body to feel the road rather than, uh, you know, trying to focus too much and, and you just have to drive on feeling. If there are similarities between Meek and a certain Colin McRae, well it's no coincidence, the pair go back a long way. Meek shares many of the legendary Scots qualities and characteristics. There's so many people have helped me out through all my career and especially Colin McRae. I, I certainly wouldn't have had the opportunities I had without Colin. And, he brought me so far and uh, yeah, I, I know he's he's somewhere in the car with me, uh, just telling me to keep that right foot down. Right, keep on, that's the sign, 50 stop, go right, find a small slippy. As I keep saying to everybody, this opportunity is will mean nothing if I don't make anything off it. And uh, if I don't put the head down and do all the hard work, I, I need to make the most of it. Chris Meek then, with high hopes for the season, running second, approaching the end of day one, behind this man, Frenchman Brian Bouffier, the surprise leader of Rally Monte Carlo. So here's how it all looks come the end of the opening day. Bouffier with a 38 second lead over Meek, less than a second ahead of Kubica. World champion Auger back in fourth, Osberg is fifth. Elvin Evans can be pleased with his day's work in sixth, ahead of the vastly more experienced Finns, Lapla and Herbenen. It's been an eventful opening day to the new season, with lots more drama still to come as the world champion gets a little too familiar with the local countryside. And one of the main contenders is about to see his Rally Monte Carlo hopes go up in flames. All that and more coming up. Up among the clouds, the Oats Alp, day two of Rally Monte Carlo. A surprise early leaderboard, privateer Brian Bouffier ahead of Britain's Chris Meek and former F1 star Robert Kubica. Another challenging, eventful day in store. Here's what faces the crews. Five stages totaling 178 competitive kilometres. The first four run in daylight, the last will be in the dark, all adding to the jeopardy. It's Friday morning with John. Stage seven. And depending on how your Monte Carlo is going, this one is either very good or very bad news. Lovely to see you. Let me explain. If your car's bang on the money and your confidence is high, then this monster is where you can go for it. But if the opposite's true, it can't finish quickly enough. The former is the case for world champion Sebastian Ogier. On his way to winning this opening stage by a massive 35.6 seconds. The tyre choice was simple this morning, apparently. These roads require a super slick Michelin, be you the champion, or like this man, a newcomer. Today's big danger, by the way, pools of standing water, so one or two crews have packed winter tyres in the boots. It's more of a level playing field today, with everybody on the same tyre choice, but is the novelty beginning to wear off for Robert Kubica? Let's put the clocks up and try and find out where he's suffering in comparison to Ogier. And he is suffering already. Ogier's time in green, Kubica in red. Ogier flew through here in one-tenth of a second over 29 minutes. And we are watching here Robert Kubica drop a place down to fourth. On the road behind that little dogfight is Chris Meek, whose career in this sport was accelerated by the approval of the 1964 Monte Carlo winner, Paddy Hopkirk, who's also from Northern Ireland. 
It took Hopkirk days just to get here back then. Makes time against Kubica and Ogier is going to be clocked in tenths of seconds. Early flat, six right. Ogier was eight and a half seconds behind, but look at this. Meek has also been eclipsed by the mighty Sebastian Ogier. Chris Meek drops from second to third place. And a 10 down a move. And Ogier's mega push will just be reaching this man, Brian Bouffier, rally leader, the last man to tackle this marathon stage. So the surprise overnight leader is still that. Bouffier remains the man to catch, but the man on the move, world champion Sebastian Ogier, up from fourth to second with Bouffier firmly in his sights. More fun and games coming up now in stage eight. Or more accurately, Kevin, after stage eight. Just sit tight and you'll see what I mean. Everything is nice and well behaved until that is the flying finish and the stop board come into view. Flat out, crossing the line and then this happens. Wow! This is it again. You have to admire the fan for keeping the camera rolling. The stop on the time control is far too close to the finish. Uh, I was flat over the finish and uh, it's totally shiny tarmac and aqua planning. So I choose to go off the road. Uh, if not, I would crash straight into whoever was there in front of me. And he's not the only one because Sebastian Ogier seems to have identified this place as the one to put the rally leader under a bit of pressure. A place to eat into that 35 second lead. But, hold tight. As Ogier approaches the flying finish, he too has to take evasive action. That makes two of them. Well, he's calm under pressure. I don't know if he's had a bit of farming experience in his time. But the moment is captured forever. And it's another example of quick thinking, this time by the Frenchman. I think he'll have something to tell the organisers at the end of that. Will you, believe, will you look at that? It's completely crazy. We are just after the finish line. Like Kubica, Brian Bouffier has decided not to use the snow tyres, so no need to get into any kind of cross-driving. But he finds the car goes well on these super slicks nonetheless. Good idea then to leave the winter tyres in the boot. Bouffier is good here. He beats Ogier's time by two tenths of a second and extends his lead by a whisker. As I decided to put uh, four slicks, it was not easy, but... Uh... Not, uh, not bad, we did a good time, so it was a, a good choice. So the battle of the two Frenchmen continues. Bouffier still refusing to read the script, maintaining that 35 second lead over the world champion. Less than a second between Chris Meek and Robert Kubica, experienced Finns Lapala and Hervenen split by rookie Welshman Elvin Evans at the midway point of Rally Monte Carlo. At which point it's Mercy and au revoir to Gap, capital of the Haute Alpes Department of France, a sports loving area all year round and voted the most popular major sporting town in France last year as one of its famous sons, Sebastian Ogier, was on his way to the world title. Right now, Ogier and the rest of the crews are heading towards Monte Carlo for phase two of the rally. Stage nine, and this is where the organizers double the jeopardy because this is chosen as a stage to be broadcast to the world live. You wouldn't want to mess up here. Watch how Sebastian Ogier, mind you, plays to the crowd. But we start with teammate Yari Matti Latvala. And once again, and we've said this before, 
you have to feel for him. Because it's in this stage that the Finn clatters the edge of an access road and punctures a tyre on his polo. An instant decision is needed to stop and change or to soldier on. He has to stop, but this interruption is going to be costly. That's a nice little spot he's chosen. But rookie driver Elvin Evans is right behind him and he is on it as well and about to get caught up in the fallout from that flat. He passes the fin there on the right hand side. So that's Elvin now into sixth place. But that's not the end of this particular drama. Oh no. Latvala has to do the fastest tyre change in France this weekend and he gets going. About 90 seconds should have done that. Cool as you like, and he even gives his co-driver the chance to settle. That's nice. But look at this. Now, Latvala is on it, and that's Elvin Evans up front, and Latvala is closing in. And this now becomes an early dilemma for the youngster from Wales. He slows three times to let the faster driver come past, but the fit isn't there. Evans gets his orders. Evans argues back. This is Latvala. He's swallowing the spray from the Fiesta. Eventually, Elvin spots his moment and lets Latvala come through. But Elvin Evans doesn't have to fret too much about that because bigger problems are raining down on his other rivals and here is the biggest one of the lot. From fourth place, the pole, Robert Kubica, is about to check out of his Monte Carlo gamble early. Brake, no grip, understeer, bridge, bye-bye, Robert. No grip there, and down there, there's nothing but trees. And with the live cameras rolling on all of this, and the people from where he was born around him now watching him, Ogier takes his cue and records a blistering time. Uh, a blistering time, that is, that includes cutting a few corners himself. But doing so with great presence of mind. You don't become world champion without getting out of little corners like that. So, Bouffier has to respond. Brian Bouffier has had the lead since winning stage three. But he spins in the stage. It's away from the cameras that are live on the event. And annoyingly, cleverly perhaps, no one sees it. But the Monte Carlo rally has a new leader. And how? Look at the times. Brian Bouffier's 35 second lead is obliterated. Another dramatic stage and there it is, confirmation, Auger is the new leader by 11 seconds. Mads Osberg benefiting from Kubica's demise, moving up to fourth. Evans and Andreas Mikkelsen both double gaining after Latvala's puncture, now fifth and sixth respectively. Back to John. Water, water everywhere. You know, it's much easier when the water does this and goes down rivers, but not as exciting as when it flows down the roads if you know what I mean. Now there are three VWs on this Monte Carlo rally. One's just got the lead, another just got a puncture, and this is the third. Driven by Andreas Mikkelsen of Norway, and he's got problems. On a rare section of snow-covered Monte Carlo road. And these are gonna be time-consuming problems. An otherwise harmless little understeer. Off the road, dropping two places to eighth. And require a lot of assistance from the fans. Now, what's this? 
Well, sunset today was at 22 minutes past five. The final stage of the day, this is it, starts at six. You know what that means. At night, if you can see, these roads have a haunting characteristic and look twice as dangerous as they do during the daylight. And realizing that less is more when you can't even see the black ice that threatens to put you out of the event, Ogier backs off a little. Gary Matty Latvila wins this stage and Ogier's move works because his only threat Bouffier backs down too. They both make it through the stage, but Bouffier has relaxed so much that Ogier's lead is now over 51 seconds. Another great day by Ogier from fourth to first. Yeah, it's, this day was much better than yesterday. But uh, the most important is now we cover the two first day of Monte Carlo. We are in the lead. Tomorrow it looks like uh, it's going to be again a difficult one with uh, maybe snow on the Turini and. Hopefully not so much uh, flesh on the road <laughs> before the snow. But up to now, I'm, yeah, can be happy. And so he should be. After a day of high drama, normal service has been resumed. The world champion establishing a comfortable lead ahead of Bouffier, making third on course for a podium. Lapala back up to fifth after winning stage 11. A word two for Elvin Evans. He'll start the final day in sixth, just 10 seconds behind Yari Matti. So, two days down, one to go, featuring that double pass through the infamous Col de Torini, and it's been snowing lots. The third and final day of the opening round of the WRC season. World champion Sebastian Ogier looking for his first Rally Monte Carlo victory. Standing in his way, the infamous Col de Torini, a towering challenge, especially after fresh heavy snow. This is one special place for motorsport fans. Everybody speaks about Col de Torini. It's so fantastic. It's, you know, it's like full of excitement. And so I just wanted to come see myself. Col di Torini, magnifico! Here we have the snow and here we have the great atmosphere, a lot of fans cheering up, so good to be here. Col du Turini, c'est le plus beau col du monde. So here's how the final day of Rally Monte Carlo plays out. Four stages featuring two runs through the Col de Torini, one in daylight, the other in darkness. Stage 15, the final run through Sospel, doubles up as the power stage. Bonus points up for grabs for those brave enough to push. We are all set then. The weather, the crews, studded tyres fitted to all corners. John Desborough, our man on the mic. Stage 12, much better known as Torini, the one stage everybody wants to have a go at. And here's Elvin Evans at the summit. He will have asked everybody he knows what this experience is going to be like. And now he's finding out. Mikko Herben in seventh place says he has a love-hate relationship with this. He'll know exactly what Torini is going to look like. But he's nursing a sick alternator. Carefully does it, gently on the throttle. Yari Mati Latvala, self-confessed Eskimo. He should be at home on snow like this in fifth place and a long way off fourth and wondering if he should have packed some skis in his polo to help him through Torini in his battle with Elvin Evans. He does that very nicely. Mads Osberg in the Citroen. He too won't know what to expect. Except that he can't expect there to be any grip. Let's see what he makes of it. Empty. 
could he have entered the Nosfa? Chris Meek, like Osberg, driving pretty much Herven and Citroen from last year and making a great fist of it on all this snow. He's quick in here, but safe too. Brian Bouffier had to borrow a set of co-driver's notes for stage 11 last night. He mislaid his and he got a set off Francois Delacour, but he dropped time. A new day means he's once again hearing familiar instructions. And let's face it, on this kind of snow, that's what you want to hear. Our rally leader, Sebastian Ogier, tackles the first run over the col with a measured, professional performance. It's another stage win for Sebastian Ogier. He's faster than his teammate by three tenths of a second. Care on the brakes. Care on the corners. At times he feels no more than like a passenger as he edges his way down from the coal. World champion taking another step towards his first Monte Carlo victory. Quickest in the next stage as well to extend his lead over Brian Bouffier to more than a minute. Chris Meek still on course for the podium. And in the battle of the M Sport drivers, Miko Hervenen gets the better of young teammate Elvin Evans. He moves up to sixth. Well, they were due for a return pass through the Col de Torini next, but the treacherous conditions proving too much for Slovakian Jaroslav Malicharek. He gets stuck, blocks the route, the organisers have to cancel the stage. Back to John. So one stage to go, and down here, all that snow is back to rain again. Yari Matilatvala responds to the frustration of Torini and flies into the final stage of the event. It's the power stage. The adrenaline is well-timed. Bonus points are up for grabs. And he sets the fastest time so far. Chris Meek is running out of words to describe this event. The first in a full season in the factory Citroen. Uh, not enough expletives or superlatives. But none of that matters, not even this fog. Because he's made it. He's in third. He's on the podium. Happy to be here. Delighted to have third place on my first event with the Citroen factory team. I really have to thank Yves Maton for putting a faith in me. And uh, yeah, if I can finish this rally with no mistakes, I think I can do it in any rally. Shame not to see one of the new Hyundai's finish the rally. But there is one of their test drivers, this man, Brian Bouffier, responsible for developing that new i20 car. Their loss is his gain. He finishes in second place as a privateer, one in the eye for the big factory teams. I'm very happy, it was a so tough uh, rally and you know, finish second in Monte Carlo with a so huge uh, entry list, it's, uh, it's really amazing. We're about to see how much this site means to VW, last year's new team. And this man, the man driving it, the world champion, Sebastian Ogier, because he, he achieved many things with the German team last year, but he didn't win this event. Now, is he going to nail the power stage as well? That's what worries that man on the right, Yari Mati Latvala, his teammate. He has the fastest time so far. Latvala's time is the one on the top. Ogier, the clock ticking at the bottom. He's not going to ruin this again, is he? No! Ogier wins the rally, but Latvala gets one over on him at the end. <laughs> Chris Meek there to celebrate as well, and this is what it means to Jos Capito, Sven Smeets and the rest of the VW team. Thanks very much, John. So, Volkswagen pick up where they left off with a delighted Yari Matti Latvala, also winning the power stage to claim an extra three points. That's denying teammate Ogier a maximum haul to go with his first Rally Monte Carlo win. It's been a tough weekend. We're happy to finish this rally. We got so much fog at the beginning of the stage and then we took it easy at the beginning, it was a bit better, but so much water on the road, so 
<laughs> I was uh, yeah, not in the mood to try to take risks for these for this points and uh, already it's perfect with it like that. Confirmation then, a good weekend for the locals. The world champion Sebastian Auger making a big statement. Fellow Frenchman, privateer Brian Bouffier, an impressive second ahead of a very happy Chris Meek. And the same goes for Elvin Evans, an encouraging opening round for the Brits. On to the first leaderboard of the season. Auger's victory with those extra two bonus points, topping the table ahead of Bouffier and Meek. Lapla fourth, courtesy of three bonus points in the power stage, one more than Osberg, then it's Evans and Mickelson. WRC2 winner Yuri Protasov with a point, completing the top ten. Volkswagen heading straight to the top of the manufacturer's standings, four points clear of Citroen, but they'll be happy with the performance of their new driver lineup. All that's left then, the ceremonial podium in Monte Carlo come Sunday morning. Sebastian Auger and co-driver Julian Engracia popping the champagne. VW looking once again the team to beat in 2014. It's been an extraordinary opening round to the season. From John Desborough and myself, Kevin Piper, and the whole of the WRC TV team, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time out with even more snow in Sweden.